maybe I've got it right. I actually got me a new camera holder, so I'm having to play with it just a little bit to see, but good afternoon for this Sunday afternoon. Today, we're going to do a tutorial on the birthday cake. So, here is the finished one. I posted a picture yesterday so that you could see what it was, and I have some ideas for how you can make it different and how you can change it. But this is the door hanger, and it has a chalkboard area here, and you can write your child's name or the person, it doesn't have to be a child, but the person's name in here, and then wipe it off, and you'll have it for the next birthday. But this is our tutorial for our happy birthday. So here is the birthday cake. And then here is the candle that matches it. So <clears throat> you can have the candle, you could put it on a stake and it could go out in the yard. Uh, but there's this um, material that, don't, that doesn't work well in the yard. So you need to keep them in a covered patio or a covered uh, entrance way so that they don't get wet. But you could also, you could put a big bow on this if you, if you chose to, but we've got the candles and the birthday cake. So I'm gonna talk about the candles first. I selected primary colors just to block in. And I put some shading on there and then I didn't like it. So I took it off. You can see this one is shaded, but I decided I really did not like the shading. Um, this one does not have the shading. So it's kind of, it's up to you, but um, I'm gonna show you how to do the shading in case you like it. And then I'm gonna show you how to do the flame. Uh, it has grooves for the two colors. So I put uh, the um, asterisk orange on the outside and the yellow on the inside. I want this candle to be black because I think it shows up it shows up better black. I'm gonna add some red to the outside and some peach to the inside. So that's what I'm gonna do first. Now I'm gonna tilt the camera down so you can see me painting rather than me. You will see the painting and not my beautiful face. So I'm tilting it down so you can see. That's pretty good right there. I'm taking the light orange I'm just going right around the outside of the flame a transition between the orange and the yellow I did two coats of my orange on the outside edge, but I only did one coat on the inside so that because I knew I was going to put this peachy color of orange on there. Then I'm going to take my red. I'm going to do red on the outside edge. And I just let the brush run along the outside edge. Okay. 
Now, I like to have the edges the same color. So I'm gonna, I'd already painted them orange, but I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do red along that outside edge. So see, I have my light orange on the inside, the yellow in the center, my asterisk orange there, and then red on the outside. So I'm going to set this one over and let it dry. Now while that one is drying, I thought some of you are having some questions about your liner brush and getting your grooves in here. So I figured out a different way if for some of you that might make it a little bit easier when you are outlining. So I've got my black. This is a little square this is a little square brush, and it will fit right in that groove. So for some of you that are having trouble with the liner brush, you may want to try this little square brush. Don't you see what I mean? When you put it in this groove, you can see that good. It rides right along inside that groove. Right along the edge of that groove. For those of you that are having trouble with your liner brush. My daughter just came in. She'll turn her phone on to see if we're doing this, if this live is going well, since I started it without her here. See how that just rides right along in that groove. And that might help some of you that are having a having a problem with the liner brush because you can a little square little flat brush and it will ride right along in those those grooves that are cut into the wood or the material see how that goes right along the edge goes right in that little groove. Now, because it's a small brush, you do have to dip more often, and you don't want to load up a whole lot, so you can wipe it off on the edge to get you a nice square edge. But you can come right along in that groove. See how, how neat that makes those, those lines? And then get them on each side while you're doing it. If you have any questions you can type them in and Carrie's here and she'll tell me what those questions are because I couldn't get it to reverse so that I don't see what you're you're asking but see how neat that makes those lines you see it good mm -hmm. okay yeah it's off a little bit but it's just there's a lot Oh, there's a lag? Yeah, a couple people are sharing it. Um, got okay. 32 people watching. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to go to the birthday cake. Do a little bit of work on the birthday cake. While the candle dries a little bit. I painted the square, the chalkboard paint. And it took me three coats to get it really chalkboardy. Um, let it dry good between each coat. I wanted my zigzags to be different colors. You, I first thought I might do black and white, but then I wanted to contrast between the black square. So I decided to do, because this 
my grandchildren are boys and girls, so I didn't want to um, have it too girly by using too much pink on there. So I selected the kind of hot colors, the, the teal and the uh, shading pink and then the bright blue is what I selected. Then this, this color is the teal and then here is the shading pink and the light pink and then I did the, the candles, just a random, I threw in the Christmas green. Uh, this is the light blue. You understand you're backwards. I know I'm backwards, but I couldn't, I couldn't make it go the other way. I didn't know how to make it go. I can do it, but um, ask him if there's an issue. Is, is it an issue that it's backwards? Would it be better for you? Because she can maybe do something and turn it. If there's an issue, let me know. Otherwise, it's just going to be backwards. But um, <clears throat> I'm going to show you about shading the bottom, the bottom tier. Terry, would you go in my house and get me a paper plate that's um, on the right side of the sink? I mean, at the right side of the yeah. sink. You got a question? Mm -hmm. No? I'm sharing it. Oh, you're sharing. Okay. Since I don't have a gray, I'm going to take some of my white and I'm going to put a little. Huh? Oh, okay. Nobody cares if it's bad. That's good. All right. So I'm laying down some white right along here where I want to shade. Then I'm going to just touch my brush. Just, I mean, I just touched a tiny, tiny bit of black. And I'm just going to put just some little touches. Then I'm going to let it shade right on. Don't mix it ahead of time. I just let it shade just like that. And see, then I've got this real light gray. And my paint was already wet. So I'm able to put just a little bit of shading and if I think it's too much, I'll dip back in my white and get some white in there. But that's a pretty nice light gray right there. You don't want a whole bunch of shading. Or I the don't. Plate? The paper plates are beside the microwave in that cabinet on the second shelf. Okay, so I'm going to come back and I'm going to get some white right on this piece. And then right here. And then just touch, just a touch of black, just just a, little bit, just a very tiny touch of black, and let it mix. And I let it mix right on the surface. I don't mix it. If I'm going to do a whole lot, then I could mix it on a separate paper plate or in a separate container or something like that. But just for a little bit of shading on this white, just right along the edge. Turn around this way. I want to shade all along the bottom where my, and I got some paint on my yellow from my hand, but I can touch that up. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna go right along the edge of the plate Ashley wants to know what kind of brush are you using? She likes to look at that shading. Okay, this is just a round. This is just a round number eight. Um, it's it's just a, a soft squirrel hair round number eight. Um, and then I just touch a touch touch of black, put it in here, and then start shading right along there with just a touch of black. With white, I just want a little bit of gray. I don't want it real obvious. The eye will blend it. But that's how you get that shading smoother if you want it smooth. Sometimes you don't want it smooth. But I'm putting a little bit of white and then I just barely touch the black to my tip of my brush. 
and just a little bit on there and when it mixes together it shapes. Can you see how that's shaded right along the edge of the plate? Then I want to come up this side and we'll do the same thing to this side. Just put some fresh white paint down. And then just touch just a tip of black. Add in there and then just let the brush mix it. It's amazing that little bit of gray just makes it three-dimensional. Doesn't take much. Okay, now I need to shade between my. Oops. Ah! Boy, did I make a mess there. That's the really good thing about this paint is if you drop some on there and you've got a wet paper towel beside you, just wipe it off. It wipes right off uh, until it dries. But that's a really good thing. That, that's one of the things I really like about this paint. Okay, I'm gonna shade the top and then I'm through with the white shading. Can they see me right through here? Good? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Maybe I can. All right, that's what I want. If you can see it with your phone, I bet they can see it too. You could come over more, but. This way? This way? Yeah, a little bit more, yeah. Okay, there's my shading for the bottom part. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. Now the second tier, which I made the teal blue, I'm gonna cover my paint back up. real plain. Um, so uh, birthday cakes have lots of decorations and things on them. So I made these swirls with uh, on top of the teal with the light blue. And I'm going to show you those swirls. Did them just like this. See it right, right there. All right. After I got my birthday painted, those swirls jumped out too much at me. I, I didn't like the way they they looked. They were too strong, I guess is the best way of saying it. So, I want to tone them down. So I'm going to show you how I toned them down. Took my, my teal, 
and my brush was fairly wet but I used what I call a dry brush I took the paper plate and I kind of dabbed it on the paper plate and then I just went across them toning them down and can you see how much that first layer it's not much paint on there I'm, I'm thinning it out and then I go just across those swirls because they were too strong they they didn't let my birthday shine enough so I just take just a tiny bit of paint and I, I kind of brush it out on this paper plate first and then go across those swirls because they were too strong I wanted some texture on there but I didn't want them to take away from the word birthday and I did the word birthday in black and it still didn't pop out enough so I outlined it in white but what I'm going to do on this one I'm going to try a white birthday and outline it in black and see how that works um, and it may not but that's one of the fun things about painting is you can you can choose how how you want to put it in there but I want to put a white birthday and just just see if that is gonna work now I've got a liner brush to go in the grooves and I, because I want this to stand out I'm filling those grooves pretty thickly See, that pops out pretty good. Where before I had the black. Just a different look and a different way of doing it. But then later I'm going to come back and I'm going to outline with black on one side to make them a little bit more 3D. It was so nice the last two or three days to paint outside when we didn't have any humidity. We got humidity today. But boy, I sure did like it a couple mornings sit outside on the patio and paint when we didn't have that humidity. But you can probably hear my birds chirping. I've got a couple of Martin houses. The last time I did a live, it was windy and my wind chimes just really sounded off. Today it's the birds. But I have two big Martin colonies. I have two Martin houses in my backyard. I put a lot of paint on my brush when I'm doing these letters because I want it to fill that groove and go on top of the, so you get a nice smooth line. Ashley says she loves the birds and the wind chimes. Wind chimes hadn't, hadn't talked to us much today. Yeah, we could sing with a little breeze. But hey, we're not going to complain. It's not raining. It's a pretty day. I just kind of use the tip of the brush to get so it goes down into that groove because I want it to fill up that groove. 
And once it fills up that groove, then you can go over it and lay in some more paint and get your line a little smoother. Okay, that's pretty good right there. Okay. I'm gonna let that dry just a little bit and then I'll outline it and show you how to outline it. Um, while we're letting that dry and while I've still got my white out, I'm gonna show you how I decorated my little chalkboard. You can start kind of in the center and I made just a round dot. And then I made an S curve until my paint kind of slowed down a little bit in the brush. And then a stop. And then another dot. And sometimes two dots. And then another swirl over to the corner. And a dot. And then another swirl, kind of an S curve. And maybe I'll put three dots here. And then another swirl to the corner. And a dot. And I'll come back up right here to the top. See it good? Okay, it's coming across. Swirl. And two dots. Sometimes I put one, sometimes I put two, sometimes I put three. Just kind of how you want it. We'll come down. And maybe one dot that time. chalkboard square. Then you've got the groove and later I'll come back with my black and I'll outline around the groove when I outline my stripe. Now while that's drying, will go up to my little top layer. I put polka dots and I had pink and then I put the lilac polka dots on there. But they turned out looking a little gray. So then I came back and put more pink in the center. Um, so I might change that color because I think that lilac against this pink came out from a distance looking a little bit gray. the shading pink um, and that's one of the good things when you do things you could wipe it off paint over it but since I had this for life I wanted to uh, show you all what I was doing to make those polka dots I take end of a brush 
and I just go in a little circle. Dip it in my brush and my paint. They don't all have to be the same size. You tap it a little bit and that paint will flow down the edge of the brush, the handle. And it makes you nice big polka dots. Now, now somebody said, what's the deal with all the polka dots? I don't like all the polka dots. And that's fine. You don't have to put polka dots. You could put stripes. You could put checks. Paint it clean. Um, you could do a checkerboard on there. Um, just something to give it a little more texture. If, and you can leave it plain. Uh, but I think when you start adding things is when it kind of elevates it um, just a little bit more when you start adding some texture on there. Julie Johnson loves the polka dots. She loves polka dots. Well, I like polka dots too. Now, I like checkerboard, but when I do the checkerboard, it takes, and sometime maybe I'll do a checkerboard to show you how I do a checkerboard, um, but this is a little small for a checkerboard. But I just use the end of the brush, and, and when you make it in a little circle, it'll almost make a perfect polka dot for you. There we go. That's probably enough right there. And see, now I like those, that shading pink polka dot better than the lilac. I, I think it shows up better against the shading pink layer cake that we've got right here. Now I took my light pink. Where's my light pink? Right here. Take light pink. Ashley said they'd love for you to do a checkerboard on something. Okay. Um, on the light pink, I did a swirl. Um, you know, cakes have these garlands, I guess you could say across the top so i made a garland across that shocking pink or shading pink so i'll show you how i did the garland because it's it's real easy I just took my light pink and I just patted. Patted it. Kind of mound it up a little bit so you get some peaks and valleys in there. But I just patted. And that made my little garland. Then I came back with the shading pink. And I just patted some of that in there. So you have more than one color of pink. While it's still wet, and it could be little flowers. And you could do put yellow in there to have some yellow flowers in there if you wanted but no brush strokes, just little pats. Okay, let that dry just a little bit. And I 
come back on my candle, um, I like a highlight down one side. So I just did one big stripe this way down the length of that candle. And that was the only shading other than the flame part. So I'll get my black and I'll show you how I shaded the flame. But the white, I just held my finger along the edge and just drew it down. Just put your finger right along the edge here and then put your brush over and then just draw it down. And that's how you get a long straight line. You let the, the guide of the outside edge, pinstripers do that. You put it right here and you just come down. And you move from your shoulder, not your wrist when you're doing it, but move from the shoulder all the way down. And then you'll get this straight highlight all the way down. along the edge of my light orange and come down into where my black candle is going to be. I'm going to do the same thing with the red. Right along the edge where I put that red in there and just let it come into here. I'll do that on both sides. do that before I paint the black candle in so that I have a place to come into. Now I'm going to outline the yellow part of the flame. I'm jumping around a lot. I hope you all can follow because um, you need to let it dry between times. I like to work on more than one thing at a time. Now you can use a hair dryer or a fan and let it dry. And that's helpful. Um, but if you can jump back and forth from one to another, and especially if you're using the same color, you don't have to wash your brush out. like the way that looks so I'm gonna come back up and make more of a point there that's pretty good now I'm gonna paint in this candle now you can have your candle some other color but I think it shows up good being black it's like the wick and the wick is burned so it's a black wick in there Is that a round or a script liner? No, it's the round. Yeah, it's the round number eight. I can get a good good point on a number eight, and um, I knew I was going to fill in the candle too. And the script liner would be hard to fill in the candle. Now, while I'm here, I like to have a black line at the top. And then I get the edge. I, I 
I'm like Connie. I like those edges painted. I just think it's more professional looking. Looks better. Okay. There we go. So, let's see if I can get that better. Well, that's pretty good right there. Um, I believe I'm going to add, I think I had it before, another line right in here. And then another. Right there. So there's the, the top of my flame. Okay, got my black still out. Now, those white letters are dry enough that I'm gonna outline them. So I want that paint to flow pretty good, so I'm going to put some on paper plate. I'm going to get just a little bit of water and mix that up with water. So it's kind of like ink. Sometimes I get it too thin, and if I get it too thin, then you just pick up a little more black and put in there. But think of a, a, a thick ink, I guess is the best way of saying it. We don't write with ink much anymore, so that may be a stretch for some people. But let's get this where you can see this good. Okay. So. I'm just gonna make a little black line with a little script liner. And it's like a shadow. See how that shadows that B? I could even go just a little bit wider with it. Maybe just a touch wider to make that shadow a little bit bigger. And that makes that letter stand out more. If you choose to do the white letters. Almost finished here. See how your birthday has a, a highlight or a shadow behind it? 
Now, while I've got this, I'll go ahead and do the candle top on this one. little bit of highlight just a little black outline now you could come and put red on the outside edge of it if you wanted a little bit of red on there I haven't done the edges of this one yet so I might come in there and put a little bit of, of uh, red on the edge I also want to shade my drip from the candle so I'm gonna go back and get my white Put a little white right along the edge of that drip and then just touch my black. Have a little bit of shading along that edge. little hard right there. So you get a little bit of shading on, on your drip. Now my garland is almost dry. But I think I'm going to put some, some green leaves on this one. I didn't put green leaves on the other one. But I think a lot of cakes have, with their flowers and stuff, they have green leaves. So I'm going to get a little bit of Christmas green. And I'm just going to put some, just like a little curve one way and then a curve the other way. And that's going to be a little leaf. Because cakes sometimes have flowers that have little leaves on them. See, one of the fun things is you can just kind of add as you choose to. There's no right or wrong. It doesn't have to be done any certain way. Just a few little leaves on there. There we go. And when that's dry, I can go right over that with the black. Got an ant falling on here. Okay, do you have any questions on any of the other? Um, maybe I'll highlight for you while I've got this inky black out the base. Uh, I always like to put these highlights. Do the same thing for my plate. I don't think can't see the plate. I like can't see the plate. Okay. over here on the other opposite side. Okay. Now, I still have to do these grid lines through here, but they're gonna be black, so they can go right over that highlight. 
that I just put in there. And I've got to touch up my yellow right here. So I'm not going to highlight this side right now because I've got to touch that yellow up because I had it on my hand and I touched it. Looking back at the birthday, is there anything else that you'd like to see how I did it? Now, when I highlighted, after I highlighted the black, I came back with a little white on the plate on both corners. And I did white highlights on the blue layer, and then I did a black highlight on the top two. But I did a white one on this side. Um, And then I did a white one down the center of my, my candle here on this side. Okay, can you ask the question or is there anything else on this that you want to know how I did any particular thing on this? Or on the candle? But here's, here's the finished candle. There's the finished candle. Okay, any other questions? No questions? No questions? Alrighty. Well, I hope you try the birthday cake because I thought it was just lots of fun. I can't wait for the next birthday, which in our household, it's gonna be July 16th. It's gonna be my daughter's birthday. And so we can put this on her front door Take chalk, write her name in here. You could, if you didn't want to put names, you could put the number of years, but, uh, and you could put name and number of years. Are the grooves pre-cut? Yes, the grooves are pre-cut. All the grooves are pre-cut for you. So all you have to do is just fill them in with, with your color. Now, I chose to use black because from a distance, it makes it show up. And if it's gonna be on your front door, you want somebody from the street seeing it. Um, you could fill those grooves in with the same color if, if you wanted the hot pink, and you could fill the groove in with the hot pink for that matter. But it doesn't show up from a distance as much as it is when it's outlined in black. It's kind of like coloring book pages. Um, you got your black outline. So if you outline in those grooves with your black, it'll pop and it'll show up better from a distance. Nobody else is Nobody else you got 10 people. Oh, okay. All right, this is my, I finished this one. Uh, this is the sunflower. Um, I've been doing a lot of the sunflowers. I love their sunflowers. And um, I chose to put my um, welcome in blue. And then the nutmeg brown, yellow centers, black polka dots, and white highlights on my sunflower. So those are the two that I had been working on this week. The birthday cake and then I finished up the sunflower from last time. And on the sunflower I put uh, the peach, the white, and the acid orange. Okay, I hope y'all have a fun time painting. Uh, in two weeks on Sunday I'm going to do a frog. If you've already seen the frog template, I'm gonna do the frog. So come back and join me in two weeks and happy painting. Bye bye.